This is Tim Tucker, AE6LX from WorldWideDX.com. Elecraft recently um, released a new VFO encoder that's a ball bearing encoder as an upgrade to the KX3. A um, number of people that I've read online have replaced it and been really happy with the results, so I decided to buy it and, and show you how easy it is to replace this part. So uh, follow along here. I've already pre-threaded this nut on. Um, it comes with these two nuts in this washer. I, I did this before starting the video. Um, but really the first thing you need to do is pop this rubber cover off of the KX3's encoder. So you just slip your thumb underneath of the rubber cover. Fingernail or a little screwdriver if you don't have fingernails, pop it off to reveal the two millimeter Allen wrench right there, which I have sitting right here. I'm going to just remove this, just loosen it just enough to get it off. So it comes right off. A little felt washer. This adds friction um, to the encoder. We're going to set that aside. Okay. And you can see here's the old encoder. I'm going to go ahead and use a pair of needle nose pliers because there's not enough room really between the plastic display cover and here to use a, a regular box end wrench and this is not really tight in any way just enough to add a little friction so we'll just spin it off here comes off pretty easily I'm actually going to just loosen it for now. What we're going to do is open up the case before we before we completely loosen that. So I'll loosen the nubs on the side. Open up the case. Now in this situation, you see I've got batteries installed. Um, probably a good idea to remove these or at least remove the ribbon cable. Um, I'm just going to remove the batteries so there's no power going to anything. And be very careful if you're going to be inside touching this without a static wrist mat. Um, keep yourself grounded to the edges of the case at all times. Careful about touching the circuit board inside. So we're just going to remove these batteries. Okay. All right. So the VFO encoder is right there. So all I'm going to do is continue loosening this. it off and pull it off okay. okay the four pins for the new encoder or for the original encoder whichever one are right there okay See, there's a little bit of difference here between the two encoders. The original one has this shield around it, which isn't really necessary anymore because it's a ball bearing encoder. It spins freely. So we're just going to insert this in here. Line up the pins. Press down. See, I pulled out the old one. Doesn't really matter if you use the old one or the new one. Put a lock washer on. Put the nut on. Spin it 
it on there pretty easily. Use the lock washer, I mean use, use the um, needle nose pliers to tighten it up just enough to keep it snug. So you don't want to over tighten this. You just really want it just tight enough to to grip the lock washer behind it. Okay. Put the felt washer back. Put the knob back. Lined up right here. And now we'll just tighten up the Allen nut. Just snug. Make sure it doesn't come off. Cover back on. Okay. That is pretty smooth. I may uh, loosen up the friction on this by just just a little bit. I don't know. I'll play with it for a while and see if I want a little more friction or if I want to move and back off that felt a little bit. But anyway, before we do that, go ahead and put the batteries back in. be able to see the screen there the coder works just fine yeah, as I'm using this this really is a much smoother encoder than the original one so it's, it's a nice upgrade so if you haven't uh, purchased it yet might consider it if you're happy with the original one obviously nothing wrong with that but I can say this uh, this is really pretty smooth so that's it simple change simple upgrade hope you enjoyed uh, putting this together if you purchased a KX3 as a kit didn't put yours together. Hope you see how easy that is. Don't be afraid to, to try to install one of these yourself. This has been Tim Tucker AE6LX from WorldWideDX.com and I hope you enjoyed the video.